God bless you and welcome to the channel. This is part two of case swapping the EM2 Civic. In a previous video, which will be linked in the description, we pulled the D17 out, got the engine bay cleaned up, painted it, installed the Jackspania case swap mount kit, and the K24A2 out of an 08 Acura TSX with a six speed manual transmission. Got it all in place, and now we're gonna be doing even more stuff in this video. Since the previous video, I installed this power steering bypass pulley kit. This is where the power steering pulley would typically go, but on these K swaps, it likes to rub the hood with the pulley. So this is the solution for that. And you can even get an EP3 electric power steering rack and throw it in, which is what we plan on doing with this one in the future. So right now the power steering is just looped. Moving over to the intake manifold, you can see we've got Jack Spania's fuel rail. We ditched the other fuel rail for this one. And this one allows you to have factory hookups. We got Hunter Tunes 1000 CC injectors in here and I soldered the connections instead of de-pinning because I just like to cut and solder. It's just easier for me. I don't have a de-pinning tool. So moving to the firewall, you can see the two lines on the passenger side of the engine bay. I moved them over gently, but firmly to the driver's side. The smaller line is actually the fuel line. And I found a way to make it to where we can still use the factory connection by chopping it off of this hose. And then now we have that connection, we can just put a normal hose on it and then run that hose all the way up here to the fuel rail. Now this is temporary because Eddie does want to do AN lines at some point and probably upgrade all the lines. So this is just temporary to get it running and it won't have an issue because I'm pretty sure that's how I did it on my last EM2K swap. Moving over to the transmission, we have an 08 speed sensor and that is not compatible with the K20 wiring harness that is on this K24. So we had to get an adapter harness to go from the K20 harness to the K2408 style sensor. Plugs right in, and that will also be linked in the description. Now moving over to the K24 crank sensor, we have an adapter harness we placed there as well to go from the K20 harness to the K24 crank sensor. Moving to the heater hoses, we have the heater hoses that came on the car with the D17. They do fit. I did have to trim one of them up, but they do fit and just need a clamp on that one. All right, so I installed this K24 K-tuned slave cylinder with Jack Spania's uh, clutch line tuck. So this line runs all the way up to the factory clutch master cylinder on this EM2. And it's a very tight space back there. It was hard for me to record, but basically I chose this fitting right here in the middle and put that fitting on and got it all tightened down. And the clutch slave cylinder works absolutely perfect and has plenty of pressure. All right, since we did use a K20A2 Acura RSX Type S intake manifold due to clearance issues, we couldn't use the RBC. This is just temporary, but since we had to do that, we had to get this K24 adapter, which allows the coolant to run through that hose down there. And this one's from Bull Boost. It bolted up really good, but there's one thing left to do. We have to drill that hole out that's right there and tap it so that the bolt will go right through it, and then that will be completed. Moving down to the thermostat, you can see we have a Bull Boost swivel style thermostat. Uh, we've got a brand new fan switch installed on it, so it won't be on the radiator. It'll actually be on the thermostat on this one, and a brand new K20 knock sensor since this is a K20 uh, tuck harness from Jack Spania. So now all we have to do is take this bumper off and get the radiator installed. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. All right, so it was a really tight fit, but it does fit in there. Just need to get the hose clamps on it and top it off with fluid, along with the engine oil and transmission. And then the engine is basically done. Actually, I'm gonna interrupt myself real quick. We still gotta hook the factory throttle cable and cruise control up with a custom made bracket. So that way we have a throttle cable here and we still have to drill and tap this piece. But that's basically it left for the engine. All we'll have left to do is the K-Tune C101 connector. So this is the K-Tuned C101 connector, and this is really simple to install. So right here on the side of the box, if you scan that QR code, it basically tells you how to install the C101 connector. Moving to the inside of the car, with the glove box removed, you'll see the wires hanging out. This one is your C101 connector, and this will plug into it, just like this. And this is the relay for the uh, O2 sensor. 
So you'll need to hook up those O2 wires and it has instructions on the box on how to do that. And this is for the fan switch. If you're getting K-Pro, you can adjust all the fan stuff from in K-Pro. The rest of these connections are for the ECU itself. So these will plug directly into the ECU. Now the ECU is plugged in, the C101 connector is plugged in, and then we have to run these to 12 volt ignition for the O2 sensor heater, and then you'll have a constant power, so that'll be basically ran directly to the battery or to a wire that is always got 12 volt signal. Then you'll mount that out of the way. Then you have this end, which plugs directly into the C101 connector on the car side. And then it comes with a primary O2 sensor wire. It's really long. You'll run that out to your upstream sensor. Now I recommend a Denso upstream sensor. Now it is really important to stick to OEM for the upstream because it is a wideband sensor. So it can detect quite a bit of information. Um, I've tried some cheaper ones and it always throws a code. I just recommend Denso or NTK. They work perfect. So once you get all that done, plug it in, then you're basically ready to start your swap. But in our particular case, we have this power wire that still needs to run all the way back to the battery box, which we don't have yet. So we can't even start this swap yet. So all we have left to do is get K-Pro installed into the ECU so that way we can start it because it's missing an immobilizer bypass and the speed sensor corrector, which would have to be wired in. And you pay an extra money for that when it's built into K-Pro. So uh, we're waiting on the funds to get K-Pro installed. We'll get the fluids all topped off in here and get the K-Pro installed, hopefully in the next video with a battery relocate. And then we'll be ready to fire this thing up. If these K-Swap EM2 videos have helped you, please hit that like button, drop a comment below, and share the videos around. It helps YouTube's algorithm know that you guys like this kind of content and recommends it to other people who are searching for the same thing. Now, I know this isn't the most in-depth K-Swap EM2 video I've done. I have better ones, and a playlist will be linked in the description so you guys can check the whole playlist out. Don't skip any of those playlist videos or you will miss something important. I go in depth and I do it on a budget. So if you guys liked it, please just share it around, subscribe if you haven't, and stay tuned because we'll have more coming if God is willing. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll my outro and here it is. I just wanna let you know the gospel, which means good news. And the good news is we don't have to live this way no more. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Jesus died and rose again, conquering death for you and I. When he went to the cross, he was thinking of you. No matter what you've done, you're only one step away from the cross. So all you have to do is repent, Believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus rose from the dead, and you will be saved. And I just pray that this message reaches the right person, because I don't know who this message is for. But I just put it at the end of my video and pray that it goes to the right person. So, God loves you, He's calling you, and He even wrote a love letter to you. Click the Bible link in the description, it's totally free. I get nothing from it other than the fact that you can make it to heaven. And it's not of your good works, it's not of mine. We are only saved through one name above every name, and that name is Jesus. And in the native tongue, it would be Yeshua. And if you want to go all the way back, Elohim, the creator of all, Jesus is calling you. He loves you, and he died for you. That's how serious it is. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of eternal life is through Christ Jesus. All you have to do is accept the gift. If I was to give you the keys to my truck, you couldn't have them unless you took them. Well, the same thing for heaven. Jesus is providing a way out. Everyone is on their way to hell right now, on this one path to destruction, and he's providing the way out. It's that simple. God loves you so much. And I pray this message reaches the person it's intended for. Jesus does love you. And if you prayed for a sign, this is it. So I'm going to go ahead and get off here, but I just wanted to let you know this. Jesus does love you. God bless. Stay safe. Stay awesome. Jesus loves you.